Join me on the final part of my 12-day tour around Belgium in my motorhome Elaine, where I'll take you to the seaside. We'll visit the historic town of Ostend, spend the night in Newport and end our holiday on the harbour at Gravelines. I'm Missy Jo and welcome to my channel, Missy Jo Menopausal Motorhomer. I'm going to take you on a 12-day tour and road trip in my motorhome Elaine around the beautiful cities, castles and sites of Belgium. I'll also finish my tour of Christmas markets in 2022 and see in the new year in the city of Ghent. To join me on my journey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So for the final part of our trip, um, we have a day and a half left. We've arrived at Fort Napoleon in Ostend and we're gonna have a walk along the Atlantic uh, war bunkers. See Ostend over there. It's quite breezy here, so the sound might be quite poor. Um, but yeah, you can see Ostend in the background there. We're not going into Ostend. We've just parked there on the front. Um, the car park, which we found on search for sites, had um, a lot of what looked like permanently sighted, not just caravans, like super, super sized caravans. Um, so we've decided to come and park down here. It doesn't say anything about restrictions, but I imagine it probably gets busy at certain times of the year. has just reliably informed me um, that the Germans built this fort and they built the Atlantic Wall because they thought it would be impenetrable by the Allied forces and it actually took one day you can see forts dotted all the way along or bunkers all the way along in the sand dunes
at this point, I regret not packing the wetsuit. They're not massive, but I reckon you could still catch a few with the body bard. such a pain to park up, Ostend looks like it'd be somewhere interesting to go. Big port. I suppose it's like coming to Hull. Do you reckon it's like going to Hull? Yeah, it's just a kind of working port, isn't it? That's, that's massive. That's an entire hillside, like they must have had a bit of a part, you know, like a bit of a town in there. Yeah. It's loads of different structures as well, isn't it? You can like imagine that, they, and there's even more over there that I bet they, um, like kept adding to it. Second to last night here in Belgium and we are pitched up um, on a campsite tonight because um, I'm sure I've mentioned before but we don't have a water pump working at the minute because when we got to Folkestone we realised it didn't work and we had to decide do we go on holiday or do we not and we went anyway so we've stopped a lot more campsites than we normally would we normally stay on airs but obviously for showering so um, we are at the uh, Compass campsite in Newport and if you like a Haven style campsite this is the kind of place you want to be so that's our pitch there we're on pitch number CS30 and you've got a play park there and you've got a massive big um, entertainment centre here with a brasserie uh, there's a massive swimming pool with slides which is open in the summer obviously there is a shop apparently it's only open in the morning um, as a snack bar, not open today. Uh, it is January, so it's to be expected. I'll do more on facilities tomorrow because it's absolutely howling it down and we need to go into town. Because we're in Newport and it's dark and I can't see anything to video, I thought I'd show you some cakes in the supermarket. So I'll give you a little bit of a tour of the campsite during the day. It's actually been quite a nice campsite. Um, one of the big issues is this shell stuff on the pitch. It is all over the van. So there you've got the water emptying point, you've got the toilet emptying point, you've got the reception, um, there's a play park, uh, playground. These are all the stale plaques, camping plaques. Uh, so you can see it's fairly quiet, but like I said, it's, what are we on the 5th of January now? But pictures are okay. Obviously, in a British van, your grass pitch, if you were in the summer for your picnics and things, is on the wrong side. So you'd have to drive in 
but you can't really do that with the angle that they're on. So I'm all freshly showered. That was nice. <clears throat> well, I say nice, actually. There were those annoying showers and the women that are watching will understand and the men that aren't watching need to understand is that when you're washing your hair, it's one of those, there was no door to stop the water going everywhere. <clears throat> so you have to make sure that everything's hidden away. Like I'd left my shoes out. <sighs> but anyway, let's get back to the van, dry the hair, put my face on. You see me very raw here. And go and enjoy our last day of our Belgian road trip by the beach. So as you join me here from the air at Gravelines, uh, just past Dunkirk on the way to the Eurotunnel, it is our last night. I do hope that you've enjoyed um, my road trip to Belgium and I would definitely recommend it, especially if you've got a short time frame like 10 days. Um, I think you could do Bruges and Ghent with four or five days. This is the air at Gravelines. It's 30 minutes away from the tunnel, so it's a great stopover. It is towards Belgium, the Belgian border. Um, you've got the recycling facilities here. It's four euros for 24 hours. Um, there is no services for water or toilet. And just to give you an idea of the local area, it's beautiful. It's set on this lovely marina area. It's a small town. I don't know if you can see that in the background. It's great. It's like a, a, a shell of a ship. It's massive. when you're so close to a port. So here we are, packed up, ready to go to the tunnel for our journey home. Had a great night's sleep at Gravelines. See over there the blue building, that's actually a massive supermarket and a McDonald's. Uh, we got dinner in town. Coming up next time, I'll do a full breakdown of the cost of my 12-day tour of Belgium, including the cost of airs, campsites, food and drink, and entertainment. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button to join me on my future adventures.